Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 128 of my poker vlog. For this one, we cover the meetup game from Franklin, Kentucky. I have a bunch of hands to go over, so we're going to get right into it. So we begin our journey to Nashville, the closest airport to this meetup game. But upon arrival, it seems as though there's too much wind for us to land. So we circle Nashville, and we're going to go to Memphis to land and wait out the windstorm. Just kidding. Now we're hanging a right. Apparently Memphis is too windy too. Now we're flying to St. Louis. Really disappointing result on this flight tracker. Meetup game starts at 7. At 7.12, I'm halfway from St. Louis to Nashville after waiting in the St. Louis airport for three hours. But 60 mile an hour wind will do that sometimes. Thinking I'm finally making some progress, time to head to the meetup game. Nope. The line for the rental car place is outrageous. So we finally arrive at Triple Barrel Social Club in Franklin, Kentucky. Two two five tables are still going strong. Still in the mix, we see Greg goes all in, Poker Face Ash, Slow Poker, the owner Adam Rude, as well as Matt Vaughn. And we're excited to finally mix it up with these poker internet celebrities. On the first hand of note, we pick it up on the turn, unfortunately. But I'm in early position. I make it $15 with 10 7 of spades. I get three colors, so we go four ways to queen 6 6 with two spades. Awesome to flop a flush draw. I can see back here, rep all the best queens in range. Hopefully, just get folds. Otherwise, we can hopefully hit our flush. I make it $30 on the flop. Only one later position player calls. And when I bink the flush immediately with the four of spades, definitely going from semi bluffing to value betting. Hopefully when I bet relatively small, his queens and possibly six X's will be able to pay off one to two more barrels. So on the turn, I wager $60, hoping that this will not be the end of this hand. And I am proved correct when the later position player decides to call a second time. The river is very clean, the three of diamonds. Not really expecting my opponent to have three six all too often. So I think I can go for some pretty safe value on this river i don't want to size up too big want his hands like ace queen queen jack pretty much the weakest top pairs in his range to be able to call i only wager 150 on this river my opponent goes in the tank for a decent while i'm thinking that i might have sized up a little too big it's hard to get paid by a flush it's pretty obviously out there but after a while my opponent eventually slides it in and my flush is definitely good we are off to a hot start in franklin kentucky on the next hand of note, an early position player makes it $15. I call it middle position with pocket sixes. One later position player calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of ace, seven, seven, rainbow. Not the best board, as the preflop aggressor has a bunch of aces in range, and even the late position caller can have the weaker aces in range. But when the early position preflop aggressor checks, I don't really feel the need to throw out a bet. I think some of the aces would check at least one three for fear of a seven, a little bit of pot control. My hand has a decent amount of showdown value, so I don't really see the need to start bluffing just yet, especially in the two players. So I decide to check, and the later position player decides to check this one back. So we're three ways to a turn card, which is the four of hearts. One of the safer cards, all things considered. But on this card, the preflop aggressor decides to bet for $30. Deceivers. I think it's a pretty easy call. My opponent can have like King Jack of Hearts, King Queen of Hearts, all those kinds of hands, which we're still very much ahead of. And he might just be throwing a stab out there because it checks through and have complete air. So I'm going to make the call, protect my pocket sixes. Think it's good enough. The layer position player decides to fold. So we're hoping for a clean river card. The eight of hearts is not really what I'm looking for. If he was... If he was bluffing the turn with a flush, it definitely got there. I suppose having pocket sixes is somewhat relevant because I double blocked the five six for another strong hand, although nowhere near the nuts. But my opponent checks to me. I'm pretty happy to just check this one back, take my marginal showdown, and expect to lose a lot of the time. But my opponent announces king high. And pocket sixes are going to take this one down, continuing to run well in Franklin, Kentucky. Next interesting hand, I'm in early position. I raised to $15 with queen jack offsuit. Two later position players call the button calls and the big blind calls. So we're gonna go five ways to a flop on this one. Flop comes king queen 10 rainbow. So I have middle pair and open ended, which is pretty good. 
This board smashes my range as I'm an early position opener. However, against four other opponents, I don't think my hand is strong enough to bet. Any one of my opponents could have flopped a two pair, have a pair plus gut shot, maybe just call with a jack or an ace. So I actually think my hand functions better as a check call, especially from early position. We don't really want to bet and then get raised and pretty much blown off our hand a lot of the time. When I check, the player to my direct left bets $35 and then it folds all the way back to me. I'm not going to just fold this one. I think my hand's strong enough. I have an open-ended draw to the nuts. Any ace gives me the nuts. Any nine gives me probably the best hand. So I'm going to make the call here. The turn is the jack of spades. Did not really want to turn two pair. Not really the board I'm looking for right now. So I check, hoping the four liner on board will slow my opponent up a little bit. Hopefully he'll be worried that I could just peel with an ace or sometimes a nine. But it does not slow him up in the slightest. He continues for $110. And for that sizing, I really just can't continue. My two pair is not even the best two pair on board. So I'm going to just let this one go. And I show my opponent, and he shows just a king, which he probably thinks makes me think, but honestly, I kind of like seeing that card, because he could just have king jack and have me dead anyway, so happy to see the king. think I made a correct fold. He's probably got two pair wars straight at minimum, so good fold for me. And the stack's looking pretty good. I bought in for $800, and now we're up a little bit. Before I looked down at ace jack of hearts in early position, I raised it to $15. Only one later position player decides to call, so we're going heads up to a flop of ace nine five rainbow very happy with that board flop top pair good kicker no real draws out there to be worried from so i could bet this one small pretty much with my entire range even hands like pocket kings would bluff with a would bluff with a small sizing so i continue for 15 dollars for this price my opponent calls turn is the six of spades board's getting a little bit more connected but hopefully i price my opponent out of these middling cards with a 15 dollar open from early position i can still get value from like ace 10 maybe ace 4 ace 3 all the weaker aces maybe 9 10 some of the time so i'm gonna continue betting here i bet 25 dollars hopefully just build the pot get a safer river card and evaluate from there for $25, my opponent decides to call, so we are still heads up to a river, which is the nine of hearts. Not my favorite. If he called two times with second pair, it just got there. However, I'm thinking with two bets, I probably should have made middle pair fold by now. And it's also hard to make trips, so I really don't expect my opponent to have three of a kind all too often. I think this card's pretty good for me. I actually beat five, six, ace, five, ace, six, all those hands now. And I still think that I can get value from like ace three, ace 10, weaker aces. So I think that's a good spot to do a bet fold strategy. I can bet and if my opponent raises, just happily fold. As I don't expect my opponent to raise with anything less than a nine or a somehow full house flopped or turned set. So on the river, I decide to bet $55. And it doesn't take too long for my opponent to fold. So the other benefit of betting this river is I do not have to show my cards. Get to keep my opponents guessing. And we will move on to the next one. As it's getting closer to 1230, the table's about to break. We decided to do a PLO double board bomb pot to end the night for this table. All the players decided to put in $10. So we're eight ways to two flops. I have jack of hearts. 10 of spades and then the 5-4 of diamonds so hopefully we can connect a little bit on this one top board i flop three of a kind with jack jack six rainbow on the bottom board i have a double gut shot any three or seven gives me a straight a three would be amazing as it'd be a disguised nuts but because i'm in early position and it's plo double board these opponents could have pretty much anything i'm gonna check hopefully just check call get to showdown as cheaply as possible when I check, a middle position player decides to bet $50. The small blind calls. When it gets back to me in early position, I'm going to just call here. Hopefully, I can complete one of my straights and then add some pressure to this pot. All the other players fold, so we're going three ways to two turn cards. Top turn is the ace of clubs. Bottom is the six of hearts. Not my favorite. When the bottom board pairs, my straights are no longer anywhere near the nuts. And when the top board gives an ace, I pretty much dead to ace jack and pocket aces so really not a great turn on either one for me when i check if i face a pot i probably just have to let this one go but luckily for me this one checks through so extremely happy to see some free river cards which comes a five of hearts and an eight of spades i don't make my strand on the bottom but on the top board i make a decent full house nothing is unlimited
So I think I can bet this one pretty hard. When it checks through on the turn, I don't expect any of my opponents to have too much of a nutted hand. I'm hoping to get my opponents off a single six or single eight on the bottom board and I can scoop the whole thing. Thinking I have a pretty good chance of winning the top board, I bet $175. Additionally, since it's PLO, sometimes your opponents won't understand that they need to play both cards. So having just a single six would not be a full house in this game. And especially when the river card on bottom is an eight, they, they might feel extra nervous about calling off. Either way, I bet $175. The middle position player decides to call and the small blind folds. The middle position player has jack of spades, nine of hearts, three of hearts, four of clubs. So that would be just a jack with a weaker kicker on the top board. And my full house is definitely good. And it would be just jack nine high on the bottom board. So Jack 10 high will beat the bottom board and Jack 5 will beat the top. So we scoop this one in a very odd Jack high scenario. But there are absolutely no complaints on me for this one. Happy with the results of it. Now with the new angle, we move to the second table. Last one running. It's about 1.30 a.m. at this point. I'm in the under the gun plus one position with ace, ten of hearts. I make it $15. One middle position player plus the small blind, which is poker face ash, decide to call. So we're going three ways to a flop of ace, six, six, rainbow. Pretty happy to flop top pair. Decent kicker. Don't expect my opponents to have a six all too often. So I can bet this one small for value pretty happily i bet 25 dollars only the middle position player calls poker face ash decides to fold so we're going heads up to a turn card just the four of spades i think i'd like to pot control this at least one street don't think ace 10 is strong enough to get three streets of value so this street will be my pot control and on the river i can go for value against like pocket sevens pocket fives pocket eights things such as that so i check and my opponent checks it back Pretty happy to see the eight of diamonds on the river. Doesn't really change a whole lot. So I'm going to bet small here, hoping for a small pocket pair to be able to pay off a bet or maybe a wheel ace, like ace five, ace four, ace three, any of that. So I bet $25. My opponent does not think $25 is enough. He raises to $50. Very odd. You don't see that too often. And I just decide that this min click is just like always a six and I'm not going to pay off this min click. I'm going to be disciplined. He's never raising with a worse hand or a bluff in this spot. So I just fold, but it's a meetup game. It's fun. My opponent's nice enough to show me ace eight of clubs. So the ace was not a brick. It actually improved my opponent's hand. Nice hand to that person. But the stack's still looking very good. We're in for only $800. We're up to probably about 12 at this point. P4, a middle position player raises to $15. Poker face Ash decides to call as well as the cutoff before. I looked down at pocket tens on the dealer button. We're going to three bet this one. We don't really want to play this four ways. So we're going to raise this one up to $70. Hopefully get, get it to at least heads up and get to play in position. But $70 will do the job. All three opponents fold and we pick up 45 uncontested. Cake. Pretty good result for pocket tens, I'd say. On the next hand of note, I am under the gun with pocket kings of the red variety. Beautiful sight. I raised to $15. Greg goes all in in the plus one decides to call as well as the big blind. So we're going to go three ways to a flop of ace, nine, deuce, two hearts. Always an ace out there. Now I think I'm relegated to check calling these kings for at least one street. I check. Greg decides to bet $25. When the big blind folds, I don't think I can fold to just one bet. So I decide to make the call here, peel, see what the turn brings. I do have backdoor hearts, which do come in on the 10 of hearts. So now I'm blocking the nuts, which is pretty good. I expect Greg to slow down a lot if he had a weak ace, but he does not slow down. He bets $75. Well, now turning the nut flush draw, I definitely can't fold. Not sure exactly what Greg is repping at this point, but I think I definitely need to peel a river and see what develops. So I make the call of 75 and the river is the 10 of diamonds. Definitely an interesting card. At this point, a flush is no longer than nuts. So if Greg actually turned a flush, I don't expect him to bet river all too often. And if he had just an ace, he'd probably check back river a lot of the time. But after a long tank, Greg down bets his turn bet to only $65. Very confusing line. I don't think there's many value hands that make a whole lot of sense on this one. 
If my opponent had a hand like ace, queen, queen of hearts, he probably would not have bet this river, and he theoretically could have three bet pre. So he probably doesn't have a super strong ace. If he had a weak ace, I doubt he would bet the turn or the river when the flush completes. I blocked the king high flush, so that's kind of significant. I do beat a hand like 9-8 that he turns into a bluff. I beat hands that he would turn into a bluff like 8-8-7, eight, eight, queen, jack, and I don't block any of that. So I think this one just has to be a call. I think the 65 sizing is really targeting like a value bet bluff or even just actually value betting a nine or a deuce. So I decide to flick in the call and Greg has the goods. He has ace 10. So I guess his line does make sense. Oh my. On the turn, he's going for max value against a single heart, which I had. And then on the river, he's just down betting for value because he has it. So line actually makes sense when I see the hand. Nice hand, Greg. And we will lick our wounds from this one. So with one limp, the cutoff makes it 20. The small blind calls. I'm in the big blind with queen nine of diamonds. I'm going to make the call. So we're going four ways to a flop of 10, 8, 7, 2 diamonds. That is a pretty beautiful board for queen nine of diamonds. I am definitely going to check raise this one. When the small blind checks, I check. But unfortunately, the cutoff preflop aggressor decides to check it back. So we're still going four ways to a turn card, which is the four of hearts. On this card, the small blind decides to lead for 20. Calling, I think, is a very bad option. My hand has a ton of equity, but is actually only queen high. We block the nuts, which is jack nine, and a jack would give us the actual nuts and eight a good straight. And even a river queen should be best a lot of the time. So we're going to raise this one. We make it $70, and this proves to be enough as everyone, including the small blind turn aggressor, decides to fold, and we take up some money uncontested. The next hand of note is quite a fun one. I'm in the big blind. Early position makes it 20. Poker face Ash in later position decides to call. I complete for only 15 more dollars with jack 10 offsuit. We go three ways to a flop of queen nine eight rainbow. Can't flop much better than that when you're playing jack 10 offsuit. I check hoping the preflop aggressor throws out a bet. I am very happy to see him throw out a bet of $60. Probably going to just call this one until Poker Face Ash calls the 60. Hmm. Well, when both players continue for a pot size wager, like they have to be pretty strong. They could have two pairs. They could have Queen Jack, Queen 10, any of those hands, 8, 9, Ace, Queen. All of those hands I think might call a raise. So I'm going to raise this one very small. I want to get as much money as I can in now while I still have the nuts. I've had some pretty terrible runouts recently, so we're going to fast play this one. I decided to raise to $160. Small raise considering the size of the pot and the amount of the wagers. Unfortunately for me, this raise is clearly too much as both players fold pretty quickly. So probably a misstep on this one, but happy to take the pot down at least. And for a final hand of note, I'm in the cutoff with ace, king off suit, ace of clubs, king of spades, both black, feeling pretty good. When it folds to me, I make it 20 from the cutoff. Greg goes all in, it's been my nemesis of the day, haven't really won a hand off him. He continues to be very aggressive, raises to $80 from the big blind. I honestly probably could 4-bet this a lot of the time. Greg did not 3-bet an ace-10, so he's actually pretty, his 3-betting range is actually pretty narrow at this point to pretty much the premiums, the toppest of the range. So I think we can just call this one, play in position, have a wider, have a perceived wider range, hopefully be able to make a move on later streets. So I choose to just call the ace king. We are heads up to a flop of six, four, three, two spades. I'm very happy to see this board because I'm just an aggressor and a caller. This board favors me much more than Greg as a three better. He has all the ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, all that in range. I have the king of spades blocker for, for some of the higher flush draws Greg could have. This will be a check raise if Greg decides to bet. Definitely board favors me. Either way, when he checks it to me, I think that weights him a little more towards value. I think he checks to check call a lot of the time. So that kind of relegates me to just check it back, hopefully turn a spade and start my bluffing line there. Especially because I would check back if I had like ace six, six, seven, things such as that, pocket eights wouldn't necessarily bet this board so trying to rep one of those hands i'm gonna check this one back 
the turn is the five of clubs and on this card greg checks it to me a second time now it just has to be a bet pretty much any black card hits the river i can fire pretty big blocking both the flushes and representing that i actually have one i'm i have most of the sevens in range greg pretty much doesn't all the deuces in range are pretty much to me all the sets two pairs now that i just called his three bet this board ha gives me a massive nut advantage and he pretty much can't even call if he had a hand like pocket queens this is not really the board that would be good for him so i decided to wager 110 dollars purely bluffing hopefully this one will work out well and it does greg looks at his cards a little bit says that he misplayed it pre says he misplayed it post i don't really know what he had but he eventually folds hopefully he will show this one on his vlog so everyone in the world can know what he had and finally we win another small one before we finally rack up our chips done with the session into the game for eight hundred dollars out of the game for 1428 that is a profit of 628 hours across approximately five hours of play equated to 133 dollars an hour or 26 big blinds an hour and i'm actually happy with how i played and how i ran in this meetup game it was nice to be able to mix it up with some other poker influencers out there it was really fun experience to meet them in real life but i have another video coming up about the tournament that happened the day after that'll be out in a few days if you watch all this point thank you i appreciate it consider liking the video subscribing help me out a great deal and i will see you all on the next one